in case you hadn't seen the last video, we got quarter pound on this truck using this template that I made with an overhead projector. That's it right there. So if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link up somewhere on the screen here and uh, go check that out. It might be two or three videos. I'm not sure at this point um, how many will be to get there, but you get to see how we made this uh, quarter panel using overhead projector and my templates. So now the next thing is we got to do it all over again on that side. So let's get into that. We're going to start by transferring this to a piece of metal. So let's go check it out. All right, guys, girls. So I have test fitted everything onto what is the driver's side of my truck back there or this Land Cruiser. And uh, I had to tweak it a little bit, which I thought I might to work on this side from the design because I, I transferred the template that I made on from the paper onto steel and I had to tweak that a little bit. So I'll show you where the tweaks were needed and I'll show you what we're starting with on this side. It's pretty much the same as we did on the other side. All right, my daughter likes to leave me little artworks here and there, and she's kind of into comics every now and then. So she left me this fun one. I said, but you're gonna be in the episodes sometimes. And she said, no, that's not me, that's somebody else. So something just she did for fun. She hangs out with me. So this is what we started with on the other side as well. You can see this thing is fully roasted. Just get you caught up on where we're at here. Um, we've stripped the thing down. We've made patterns on the other side. We've got it all body worked and finished. Or not body worked, but metal worked. Metal finished up to that point. So now, yeah, check that video, like I said in the intro. But uh, if you want to see what we did there. But now we're going to do the exact same thing on this side. And... Uh, what I had to tweak, I was talking about, was this here on my pattern wasn't quite the same shape, so I had to tweak the metal. But I made it, I think I've got it perfect now. I've changed that on my pattern a little bit and transfer that to the steel. I've got accident damage here, so I got to rust repair this. That'll probably happen in this episode. This is where we're starting, guys. I'm keeping this little bit that's it um maybe part of the trance tunnel i think i've said that in an earlier video but it's starting to close itself up there we're going to replace all of this yet by the time this thing's done so let's go look at our pattern so this is the pattern i made here i'll link up that video using the overhead projector uh, you can check that out um, i've put little windows here so that when i put this down i can tape it hold it tight so this angle has changed a bit up front here and uh, what I found when I did the curve on the other one not having any of this in here this is going to be my 90 degree folds and on the other one I had it go right through and I did slip cuts here and I found it warped on each spot I did that and I had to hammer and dolly this flange to get it to come back which is a bit of extra work so I'm going to try it differently this time I'm going to cut this out along here, along here, 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 and here. And basically, I will. this is the one inch thickness that the folded over flange is going to be. I'm going to make one inch pieces here, and we'll fold them to that shape and weld them. I think it will keep the quarter straighter. We'll know better after. I can give you feedback on that if I remember to do that. This one doesn't have a fuel door, but we don't need to worry about that. So when you pull the pattern off that's what you got there so it'll get cut i think what i might do too to help it cut nicely is i typically score it ever so slightly wherever there's got to have a fold and then we'll hammer and dolly it this is actually a, a flanging jig that i made basically you'll see it yet in this video probably when you have a flange 90 degree you want i clamp it in with another angle right angle and then I hammer it down until it's flush. But uh, that's our panel for the passenger side. Nope, for the driver's side. There you go. We did passenger already. Depends what country you're in, I guess. 
And I've marked here where the panel stops going straight and where it's got to get curved. And I guess the curve ends about here, if I remember correctly. All right, quarter panel is cut. I gotta fold over anything that's a tab like this or a 90 degree flange. And that one I'm gonna wait on after I get the curve to make sure I like it. That's actually falling in the right place. Sometimes it changes a little bit once you get it mounted up because that paper had a bit of flex in it. So um, yeah, I'm gonna fold this over. Then I gotta weld in these little strips here and do a test fit kind of in that order, I guess. Um, I might end up potentially also just folding this, putting on the truck, see how it looks, but uh, that's the panel, it's cut out. All right, guys, girls, I built this rack. I uh, can't remember if I showed it to you last time, and even if I did, some of you will be new on the channel here. Um, I built this out of pretty much scrap metal or metal that was like on sale. For cheap, it's got a 90 degree on here, and we got another one on the floor that I clamp on here. But basically, we'll take our panel. Wear gloves so I don't get cut. And we want to put a 90 degree bend on the front leading edge of this panel and basically that's going to allow it to weld once I put plug weld holes in here it'll allow it to weld to the existing as they call it B pillar um, where the door latch is on. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to clamp this in here. And the reason for the clamping another angle iron onto here, this is a pretty heavy duty angle iron, and it was a piece of stainless because it was on sale, but I think it's actually stronger that way. I clamp this on so this panel stays flat because I'm going to be hammering this down here. And if I just hammer one spot and it's not clamped, it may move, but also being clamped with a strong piece of steel, it'll allow the piece, the rest of it, not to take a bowed shape. So let's get into that. And you might be saying, well, why don't you just use a metal brake? Because that's a lot more money. And I work on a budget. I don't get paid for this work. It's fun work. So I make it work the way I can. Getting it lined up is, is the, really the biggest part of the task. And I, I know I've mentioned before, but just as a reminder, I'm gonna I'm using 16 gauge on this project wherever I can, the, wherever the equipment allows. All right, I'll go get a hammer. Combination of hammers on the thicker steel. Um, I might use the ball peen if it bends slow, but otherwise I got a, a normal body hammer here. Hearing protection. And I like to use my welding gloves. So I'm just hammering it down. That's all there is to it, guys. And I got my bend in there. It's also stronger as a result. All right, guys and girls. 
Like the other side, I had to have the quarter panel in there. This time I knew what I was I want to achieve here, how I want to accomplish it. So all I needed was this edge. And what I've done is get it in there square. You can see a bit of a bar sticking out here. And I've just welded it to the frame area here just with tack welds so that this doesn't move. We've got our driver's side rocker panel here. Squared up. And uh, check out the other video if you want to see more up close details on it. But basically, I've cut back what's usable here. We'll be building a patch up front here. Once this is welded in, I'll be building this front corner. It'll need to be hammered and dollied out. Um, then we'll come back and finish this quarter and weld that in. So it's middle, front, back is what I found worked good on the other side. So this guy's going to come up here. I gotta get them squared up. Make sure our measurements are close. And uh, I'll probably just tack weld this in place on here once I know it's square. So the front here from this point of the bottom of this folded piece to here is 10 and 3 quarter inches and the back from here to here is 25, it's 25 and 2 16. Yeah, 25 and 2 16. Uh, made each side the same and this is the measurement I found on another 74 on I think I hate mud, something like that. So. I've got this nice and ready to go here. I've noticed here, to bring this up high enough, this needs a bit of tweaking here. So I'm going to do this mark with tape because it's easy to see. So I need a little bit of a flange to, to weld on here. I just got to shave it off a little bit. the front yet because it's rusted through right there so I gotta build a new patch for that spot but the rest here we'll go to town on So what I'm going to do now is put a weld down, uh, blow it cool, put another weld down, blow it cool, and the blowing it cool keeps it from warping too badly. Old hot rodder is tricked apparently. Works good. I can just stitch weld that all together that way instead of running one continuous weld and working this panel. So when it's cool enough to weld, it gets back down to about 22 degrees Celsius and you can touch it with your hand.
that's what I'm at now on the second step here. Initially we got it tacked on and now I've got the tacks that far apart you can kind of see with my finger in there. Um, so now what I'm going to do is weld, probably weld, 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 and then come back and go in between those welds. And uh, we'll try the slow motion or the, uh, the uh, whatever you call it, the high speed film and see if you can get a bit of a, a glimpse at it coming together. It might look kind of neat. Alright, so there's the weld. Remember, it's not TIG welding. I feel like I have to explain this every video because I've had people comment in the past that the welds look awful. Um, this is the kind that allows you not to warp it with a MIG welder. Um, the other thing is here, same as the other side, I patterned this where I thought the rust was, but then it turns out the rust goes higher up. So I gotta build that little corner there. Um, yeah. Once that corner is built, then I can clean it up, and then this quarter can be welded on as well. I'll probably have to remove that brace from there and weld it onto there. That way, I can remove the quarter to get this fitted up in there. Cause I gotta butt weld both of these. So I can tell there's definitely been an accident on this vehicle. And that's why this fender is so much better than the other side. There's actually orange paint underneath here. Um, that's red and it's bent all along here. I spent time hammer and dollying this. It's fairly close, especially on the bottom so that I actually could weld a patch to it. I gotta replace it just like the other side. Just like the other side, this is that template from there. It's going to go, you can see it there, it goes this way. So it'll probably be close to this. But yeah, hammer and dolly work was done there. This fender doesn't match. It should look, I imagine, a lot like this one, which I've taped up so I don't cut myself on it because it's rusted out. Uh, core support or front grill support and hood also have orange on it for some reason or another but this fender's red and that's freeborn red as well so a couple panels replaced here that i'm sure would have been rustier otherwise so got enough hammer and dolly work done here that i can now put this corner in here then we'll grind her all smooth and then we'll start on the back i have also added a support it's tack welded you can see it there, which keeps this from moving. That's what I was talking about earlier. Well, I've got this one from the other side. We're working on this now. Uh, I should also mention door is on. Dad came down to help me with that. Get her up fit and good. And uh, we can check my gaps. If you have a look at the gaps, they're doing what they need to do. So, this one here obviously um, will get flipped around and it'll fit here. Looks like I'm going to have to tweak it a little bit to bring up the gap on the back side there, but not much. And uh, we'll get that drawn up. I'll make the piece and then we'll get it fit up. All right, got the welder in the background. That's what you're hearing. But I got this patch ready to weld in. In the front corner here. Let's see if we can get out with one hand. It's a pretty snug fit actually. Probably a good thing. There. So that's what it looks like inside there. 
as per the last video. So we're going to put welds through coating here. And here I'll mask it off and uh, let that dry for a couple minutes and have a bit of a snack. So you can see this Booger welded probably till about here. It's actually thin there after I started grounding it. So I got this little piece here. I did that on the other side as well. Got a bit of shape to it to match that curve. And we'll try and put a, a not a perfect weld in here, but a half decent weld. This is going to stay exposed. And if you look at Toyota welds, I want mine to look better than factory ones. All right, I just finished building this little piece here for some perspective. The bottom of the B-pillar area into the rocker. We're going to weld that in place now. So at this point, it gets part of what makes it easier is I've kind of, in a sense, prototyped everything already. Quarter panel, rocker panel, front patch with hole spacing underneath here for the wheel tub to the top rail a um, couple other small pieces that we just used to join the rocker and the little front patch so all I have to do is mostly transfer and a little bit of tweaking depending if that size is grown or not cool my wall of templates well, we're getting pretty close here. I've ground all this down and I was about to tackle those, but I think it's time to go in for the evening. But surprise, unexpected, but I guess it should be on an old vehicle. There, is, I looked, saw a pinhole here, so I tapped with the hammer. It just folded right in pretty easily and here. So if this is compromised and then I spot welded a couple spots that I thought looked thin, um, I think I'm going to have to build this piece here. So literally not keeping any of this sill is what it is. Um, yeah, so I'm going to have to build inside there. I think that'll be good. Whereas the other side, it seemed pretty good. It seemed to have a lot of integrity yet. If you look at this thing, there's a lot to go off of here. We'll clean it up good more, or we'll clean it up more yet. But it came out good. And the other side's kind of wavy. I don't know if it's from the accident that used to be on here. But uh, we have some accident damage. I think I showed you either this video or was it the last one? That was damaged, but I found out this was high from the damage. So I've had to tap that down. The whole head was tweaked. And we do have those mismatched orange panels, this one, that one, that one, and the front bib. So, yeah, this is still original, but did have that crease there. I'll get that cleaned up yet, but I think I'm going to put a hold on that. I kind of want to just get this done in here. Come up with a template for that and a plan. So, potentially, this weld that I just did, you saw me do, I'll probably be doing again because I might put the fold in there we'll see because the fold is also the old rusty metal all right i've made the new door jam bottom part of the channel here so we can replace the old and i've left it open-ended on the top because the idea is i'm going to weld it in and i'm going to hammer fold it over the existing seam there and i might leave this open until I know what this is going to look like inside here. So I'm going to remove all of this. I'm going to have to cut what I welded here, I guess, like we talked about and cut down here. And then I can start tacking this piece in. And it was pretty important that it got fairly straight. So it'll just fit nicely in here. Quite a, a straightforward piece to make. The hardest part was I bent, bent, and then this last one, I had to put a little bit of a set in here because it's such a small part and you can't clamp it on a bent side already. I knew one side or the other would need that, so. So I've cut the bat out of here. Some weld through coating on there. I usually tape off 
when I do my welds recording so I can keep clean what I want to clean. I don't have to clean it off later, like on this clean metal. Um, but if you look at this flange inside there, like I was thinking is actually still good, both sides. And we've got the patch sitting down here, some weld through coating on there. And it's a little hot. It's just, yep, a little too hot to handle yet. But that's gonna slide right in here. We'll get a glove for that. I was using the heat gun to dry it. So I, and I've got holes drilled in here because this top was spot welded from factory. That I think we're going to clamp it down and do the spot welds on top first. And then I can weld the bottom to it. That, that'll work really good. And then I can actually fold this over as soon as I'm done and put the strength back into this piece. So I'll tack weld it, we'll close the door. And I think this is square enough, I can pull this metal out and weld in there. Maybe I'll run the grinder through it once so I can fill it full of weld, have enough gap to give it strength. But yeah, I think that's what we'll do. Everything looks like it's lining up good. I'm gonna weld it and then uh, you'll see it after. And that way, this is all like factory, the rubber should seal against there nicely for as much as it matters on an open top vehicle. I got it tack welded in place like I talked about, got the spot welds in there, then uh, it's tacked here, it's fairly straight at this point, looks like I got one more patch to make right here because right there is still original. Close the door, see if it levels out. Also remember this door is hanging just a little bit because the hinges are shot. That should work. So. I've widened up the gap as well so I can put a little bit of a curve like factory into there once it's welded. It's coming along really nice. Next, I don't think we'll have to do this the other side, but if I do, I'll have another look at it. If it looks like I do, I'll do the same thing. And then after everything's done, we'll fold this lip over here. But I don't want to fold the lip till I have the strength in there. I'll probably weld it, fold it, then grind it. Here's the funny part about it is literally from this point here and this point here, none of that is going to be original except for this little sliver of red right up to this curve, unless I find more rust in here. But I don't think I will. It looked pretty solid up till about here. So there's not a lot retained at this point there, but it's pretty neat that a guy can make all of it. All right, everything is welded in place here, including I built one more patch here. And so I'm pretty happy about two. This folded edge here, I'm not sure if I'm getting a good angle. Oh yeah. You can see the full edge here. Man, that is a lot of work though to bend that. 16 gauge. So there's a lot of strength there, guys. But uh, like factory, got to get it ground down now. And I can move on to this last bit of this side. All right, I'm done with the rocker panel. A little bit of grinding left. There's the new door jam. It's, it's super good. I'm very happy with it. I'm just about ready to go on to the, uh, the quarter panels back here. And that's what's sitting there. So that's what we got to make next. So time to tackle this quarter panel. I've got the folds put in here. And on the last one, if you can look at the last video, I put slits and bent it up. I found there's a lot of heat that went into it. I think I work better with heat and warping. So I've cut a one inch strip to match the thickness of this and just bend it and I'll tack it into place on here. And I think that'll be a much better way to get that thing in there. We'll do it for there, there, 
there and then this will come after I do the bend because it, it's got to take a curve in there so I'll add that piece later. So I'm finding this is actually working much better. It's not warping as badly here. Like these seams here might need a little bit of stretching. I find when you, even with tack welding like I've done, when you weld it, it wants to pull a little bit tight and puts a little bit of a crown right there. So this has to be hammered out and then that typically fixes itself. So what I did was I had this uh, one inch strip. I think I just mentioned that, but uh, cut the shape, tack welded in place. We're gonna do that on each one of these, like I've mentioned earlier. I'm I'm liking it, it feels feels fairly level too. So that is better than slitting and welding a bunch of slits together, less uh, pull on the panel. I'm thinking what happens is when I tack weld this piece onto here, it keeps it flat. Instead of having a bunch of little ones tacked and having the heat all pull it in and cause a large crown. And that's what we did on these ones. It was slit cut, it's barely been metal finish and whatnot but each one of these then what i had was a bow right there on each one and then i had to hammer and dolly it flat so reminder what we got here from the last video all right you can see i've ground down some of the patch i left some uh, weld for strength but i took down these edges here so when you put your hand in here you don't cut yourself and it feels nice and clean like factory. So that's what that looks like. We'll flip this over. So you can see the welds, ground down, finished. I'll clean this one up here, where I had to tweak that a little bit so it fit the truck better these cleaned up so next thing I do is part of it is making this curve which is this piece here but I also got some rust repair from an accident damage in the past so I'll probably do a thin plate here to keep this gap the same because I'm gonna be lap welding it onto this along this edge right here so We'll build that piece. We'll plug weld it on. I have to keep mindful of the tie down hook holes. And then uh, we'll weld this in place. And then the top part of it gets fixed later. That's exactly how I did this side here. All right, guys, I've got it marked here and here. We gotta put a bend in the quarter panel. I didn't show you in the last video I really had to kind of guess without a slip roller. We're doing it without a slip roller. I used a, a five gallon panel and this piece of diesel truck exhaust tubing. I found this one works better. We gotta go slow with it. I do like that it's got a bit of a hook on here. Basically we're gonna take our slow and bend it around here and get it close enough Pull down on that truck there. So you can see it's starting to take that curve. I gotta be very careful I don't kink it. And I'll keep working with it. So that's what I'm doing. We're not gonna show the whole process. But uh, that's it right there, you can see it. Well, I got this bad piece cut out of here. I've got a new piece to go into here because I've been butt, butt welding and plug welding on the other side, we did the same thing. So I'll get weld through coating on and then I'll weld this guy in here. Then we gotta bring our holes back through. Then I have something I can weld the quarter panel to. Yeah, I could weld to, to this straight onto there, but I want to kind of keep this thickness all the way through without thinning it out. And I got to make up this thickness and I don't really want a gap in there. I want to have it nice and tight. All right. Fitment is awesome here. Very good. Check out the gaps. We're going to fill that with seam sealer yet once it's welded. 
and I'm working off of just below the factory line this here. Now we got it this far. It's very close. So what I'm going to do is a mixture of rubber mallet. I'll tap it down, roll it around and I'll clamp it and I'll screw it down. So then uh, get back here. So then you'll be able to see that process. I've outlined it for you now. So let's get started. I've got it kind of straight. I'm going to start by clamping it, see where it falls. And I'm going to screw it down, suck it tight. So, quarter panel's on there now in the, around the radius, and it's fairly decent too, I'm quite happy with it. This has got to be trimmed a bit on this edge, you can see it hangs over a bit here. And then I got to get uh, this line bent up into here to match the other side, and then we got to weld it's on here, I got to weld this bottom piece, which I have the template for on the wall over here. And keeping all these guys is coming quite handy going side to side you can see it just behind there it's a curved one that's the one that's marked out to do it'll get a flange in here see it in there and then it kind of curves up around here all right guys and girls on the wall here is that template i mentioned you know how much easier it makes things to build I guess we should take off the mask. I've been wearing my PPE to be able to do this longer. But that made this part. I had on the other side, I had to literally prototype all of this. But this piece is going to go in here. I just had to cut it out and bend it. So I'm going to tack weld, or I'm going to weld it on the vehicle here. Clean up the welds off. That way when I pull this panel, this holds its shape. So it's going to want to flex back a bit on us. So I'll weld this in. And uh, I don't know if you really need to see it after, but maybe when it's off the vehicle, we'll take a look at it. Let's go. Got Bob down again. Changing up the blades on the cutter. Oh yeah. And uh, I'm not sure if you want to show us progress update over the last time you were here or not, but well, he's working on his thing. We'll definitely link the Instagram again. So you can check out his build. We can. I don't post a lot on Instagram, but I've... Almost got this whole thing re 
re, uh, rebuilt, rebuilt the inner structure. This side was really good. It didn't have to get replace anything. This side was all rusted out. Like the other side, right? Yeah, this other side was all rusted out, so I cut that all out. Re, re put in a new piece now, and now I'm just getting a top plate here, so we get low extra strength there, and it looks factory. So, so if I show them the other rail up close, they'll see what you're up against, right? Uh, yeah, you can show them the other side, which actually is worse than the one that I'm working on. But it's getting the same treatment. But we'll do the same thing. So it's got an inner and an outer structure, and it is plated so that it's not just butt welded. It, it's going to be a nice, proper, solid repair. Yeah. Very cool. And I am up to the point now. I've got weld through coating on here. The quarter panel is done being fabricated fully. I've got weld through coating on here. You can see it. And I've drilled all the holes I need for plug welds in there. You can also see those. So I'm going to go stick the thing on now and eat some Tim Hortons. So I've got the quarter panel welded on now. Um, We've got the tacks in here. It's the, the tack type welding. And then I've also done the plug welds and I kind of weld it, blow it cool, weld it. I haven't included that in the video because we got it earlier on, on the rocker panel. I believe that'll be in this video. So for the repair here, I needed this piece to sit inside that one that we added lower so that I could bend this piece around that and get the shape right. So now the next thing is I got to build a piece that fills this gap. So, and, and once again, that's where we had the accident damage and then we'll clean it all up. Well, I better take a video of this before I get carried away and just finish it all. I gotta show you guys how I made this. I started out with this piece that's completely flat but from here to here, it's got, it starts this way and it ends in a twist that twists like that. And it's got a little bit of a ridge here and a ridge in here and then the ridge tapers out. This was a complex piece to make. It looks simple, but that was probably more challenging than some of the other ones. It should be good now. Um, I gotta finish welding up the top as you can see here, but I've got all this in place ready to grind but we're going to weld it all and then finish grinding the whole quarter. But that's the repair there and how I figured it out. All right, I had to do a little tweak here. I cut the bar, I took out three quarter inch is what needed to come out of there. Um, I was finding taking this measurement from here to there is supposed to, I was out by three quarter inch and uh, was needed to be adjusted here was accurate. Here it got wider from here to there. So I brought it in that much. And now the doors that I had tweaked, this one fits even better. The other one I had to tweak back a bit because when I, I should have been a bit of a telltale sign, but it's also worn out, right? But when I close the doors, they would sit at an angle like this. So I had to put my foot on the bottom and tweak it, bend the whole door a little bit. Um, but it's still what it needed it. That one was bent. The other side I had to pull back because now when we close it, um, it wanted to sit outward and this gap was wrong here. Now it's right. So that top will fit before what I had to flex a lot. So I just welded a brace back on temporary quick with a piece of scrap. And uh, we'll keep trucking right along. Almost got this patch welded up and then we'll grind it smooth. We'll weld in this piece for a heads up what's coming. And then I'm thinking I'm deciding on the rear floor back section up till this point here is where we'll start on the interior. All right, I have had a little bit of issue in this area here. It's thin, there was two pinholes, and I thought I could just spot weld them in. But the back side also needs a bit of work. So, I've got this piece that I'm working on here. That'll get welded in there. Grind right in that place, we'll drill the hole in the side, fold the edge down. 
same thing as we did same thing as I did in this part here it's pretty much the same type of piece actually okay the only difference is it's taller on the original one but same idea The rest had a couple small pinholes and I was able just to spot them in. And all of this looks really quite good yet too. All right, I've got a hole cut here. I've got this piece and there's weld through coating on this and the back side. We're gonna get her mounted up into here and then we'll weld it in this repair is done I got the hole back in there i had to make sure i drilled it from the back side first and then when i fold it over i could drill it through the front side here and there is the back of it nice and straight got the holes drilled here for my tie downs probably run a soft top at some point all right getting close to the end of this here on the exterior i got the quarter panel done the welds are all ground down it's come out really well and we also did this one in here and we rebuilt inside here that part for recap on this doors actually close now and last time we did some work on these just for those of you who didn't see the video that's what i did the last time so i got the sill cap here it's got to go on yet i gotta build the interior yet and i think next time we'll get into this 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 and these i gotta make templates for that to start and we'll get the back of this thing done and then we'll move on to the front floor and this tub is pretty close at that point with the metal work still a lot to go in there but thing hasn't looked this good in a long time well guys and girls exterior sheet metal on this thing is pretty close to done we got the big parts of it done i gotta go out and add holes in here yet but that's gonna happen once i get all the tub done we gotta add holes for doors um, I'm very happy with how this has turned out. Next time we're going to be starting on, like I said earlier, the bed floor and the rear wheel tubs on the inside. And I'm going to have to learn a new technique called hammer forming. I have a bead roller, but it is not big enough to do all the beads in that floor. So we're going to be learning some hammer forming, but first we're going to make those patterns. And uh, tune in next time, guys. We're going to get her done. And we're going to have some fun. So we'll talk to you later. And as always, get in your shop, get your stuff done.